Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We welcome all of those that have joined us live. And um, if you're watching a delayed broadcast, we welcome you. And uh, just want to declare, I mean, I'll just tell you right now, we've had such a beautiful, beautiful time in the house. Partook of some just phenomenal, just holy communion. The presence of God is so powerful in the house. And right now, we just release the power of God into your house and wherever you're watching from, whichever nation you're watching from, whatever crisis you're up against, I'm just declaring to you right now that my God, your God, is bigger than any crisis. Hallelujah. He's a miracle-working God. He's a healing God. Hallelujah. And so you have not... Nobody has come to this place by mistake. It's all by divine providence that you're here. And it's by divine providence that you are watching. Praise God. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Praise the Lord. I have a very good message today. But it is a very serious message. Very important message. And my heart is stirred up. And the Lord has really helped me in this last week to really focus on a very, very big aspect of the calling of this body, this local body, Amazing Love. And there's much, of course, we're called to do the works of Jesus and to continue them. But there's very specific, something very specific came up in my spirit. When, when we first came to the islands, we left a very thriving large church. And when we came here, I questioned and I said, Lord, Hawaii is so far away from everything. Now, some people would just run at the chance to come, but... I, I guess when you spend time with the Lord, you become more kingdom minded. And really it didn't matter to me where geographically we lived. We, you know, you, you get to a point where you want every minute to count. Because there are people that, that are going through so much pain today. And so therefore we don't just need a revival or an awakening for the sake of some big religious event. We need an awakening because people are in pain. And Jesus loves them and he, he has delivered them from their pain. But they don't know the path to deliverance. And the Lord shared some things with me at that time. But to some extent, there's been a question. You know exactly why Hawaii I knew. And again, there's, there's a lot of quick answers we can give. And I know that Hawaii is, is set aside prophetically as a catalyst for revival around the world. And I really believe that much of the last day revival will be birthed out of these islands. The music, the worship, every part of it. And everybody in the world lives here in Hawaii. Uh, it is, if you raise a nation's flag people will come and stand under it and it is certainly a melting pot and as they call Oahu the gathering place it is a gathering place of all the people of the world yeah. and so as revival hits here it will affect every and impact every nation yeah. praise God and I knew that but this last week it's like this it's not the Lord shared some things with me that it's, it's like I already, it wasn't new information, but there was a new revelation on old information. And my week kind of started with some people sharing some things with me. And let me say up front, I'm not going to share any names, but I'm going to share some of the stories. And when I share stories, even about pastors and church leadership, it's not with judgment in my heart. But it's with compassion in my heart. And it is with excitement in my heart. 
because and the excitement is there because of the mandate. And with the mandate comes an anointing. Hallelujah. And, and so therefore, there's some people that might look, or maybe you'll put two and two together and figure you're talking about this person or talking about that person, and, and who are you to judge them? No judgment in the house. This is a judgment-free zone. Hallelujah. But we are, we are a team with Jesus to stop the pain yeah. and to stop the bleeding. Yeah. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And so even if you are one of the people, one of the pastors, one of the leaders, don't you feel condemned for a second. Because the people that I'm going to talk about are ones that I hold in higher esteem than most people. I really, really honor them. And I'm very, very respectful of them. But the week began where a pastor came up to me and I said, how are you doing? And he said, I'm trying to stay alive. I said, what's going on? He said, my heart is functioning at 15%. Now, the fact that he's walking around with his heart functioning 15% is a miracle in itself. And again, I, said, I immediately said, well, let's, let's get together and let's talk and whatever. But there's just compassion that rose up in my heart. But there's so much stress in the ministry. There's so much stress that if you were ever going to do something for God. Look, if people don't do anything for God, then, then maybe they're not going to suffer as much pain. But if you're ever going to do anything for God, all of hell is going to come against you. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we have to know how to process things and how to apply the principles of the new covenant. We have to know, family, because if the Lord sends the awakening that we're all praying for, and we don't know how to deal with the devil, we don't know how to deal with stress, we don't know how to deal with hardship, then the very thing that we're praying for will kill us. Physically kill us. Where we're going is, it's a different level. We talk about a book of Acts church. Do you know that in the book of Acts, what happened to the leaders of the revival? Do you know that, <laughs> that John, when he was on the Isle of Patmos, he was locked up on the Isle of Patmos. Do you know that, that, that there was a time in his life where, and secular history verifies this, where they took him and they threw him in a pot of boiling oil. And yet he did not burn. And because they could not kill him, they isolated him on the island of Patmos. And then he wrote the book of, of Revelation. We read the book of Revelation and we think, wow, it must be nice. But it must be wonderful to have Jesus appear to you and see heaven. But in other words, John knew how to deal with adversity, how to deal with the attack of the enemy. If he didn't know it, he would have died prematurely. Yeah. Paul, the Apostle Paul. I mean, the things he went through in, in the book of Philippi. He was in, in jail writing to a pastor that used to be a prison guard. And, I mean, he had been, if you read his account... He'd been beaten and scourged and, and he says, he even says that he died several times. People say, well, that's just metaphorically. I don't know. The Bible doesn't say that. He says in deaths many. I take the Bible literally. I believe he died and they raised him from the dead again. And yet in the book of Philippi, another time he's fighting for his life. He's saying... I have to make a decision right now whether to live or die. 
He's busy dying in the natural. God only knows what, how he was beaten or what he went through. But he says, I choose to live because to live, to live is Christ. To die is gain. And the reason I choose to live is for you guys in Philippi. So that I can continue to minister to you. He makes a decision in the whole book of Philippians. You don't hear about his pain. But he's ministering out to others. We say, well, we want Book of Acts Church. With revival comes persecution. With revival, with an awakening. I mean, if you stir up the kingdom of darkness, and we have to know that our feet are firmly planted on His head when He gets stirred up. And we have to know who we are in Christ. We have to know how to process things. We have to know, otherwise... The revival we're praying for will be short-lived. It is coming, but there are some adjustments that need to be made. You, I mean, the pastor that I was talking to is a leader of a phenomenal ministry, spirit-filled. And yet, if he does not learn... And put into practice some things in the new covenant to do differently. Then he will not live to lead the revival. And he's the aspect of the revival that he's meant to lead. And I mean it wasn't just after that. It came to my attention that another young man. A pastor. <coughs> I would say the most up-and-coming, dynamic young pastor on the island today, possibly that the island has ever seen. On the cutting edge, spirit-filled, phenomenal. Church is growing like crazy. No longer in the ministry. Out, nervous breakdown. Another leader spoke and said he suffered major burnout. Out. Now, might come back, pray that he does come back. But for as of right now, not in the ministry at all. Taken out. I mean, it's... I mean, my heart just... I've heard the vision and I've, I've seen... What these guys are talking about. Another man of God. We're talking about people on the island here. Another man of God. One of the most significant ministries. On the island. With many, 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 many churches internationally. Powerful, powerful, awesome. One of my heroes. In the faith. Phenomenal has suffered one nervous breakdown after the other. One nervous breakdown, another one, another one, another one. Now, I'm just telling you right now, that is not God's will. It is not God's will when we step into ministry that we burn out and have nervous breakdowns and die prematurely. Jesus died on the cross so that we don't have to die. In the garden, He sweated blood, which is the highest level of anxiety, so that we don't have to live in anxiety. The Bible says He became so very poor so that we could be so very rich. Financially and in every other way. There are parts of the world where Around Easter, they go and, I mean, in the Philippines and different places, people go and they nail themselves or they nail them to the cross. And you see people hanging on crosses. And they walk around and they beat themselves. So the blood runs. Family, you don't have to beat yourself. You don't have to die on the cross. He died on the cross. He was beaten. 
He was bruised. He suffered the anxiety. He suffered all of those things. Now there's hardship will come, but we're not just talking about hardship. We're talking about the effect of hardship when it breaks you. When even when Stephen gave his life and was being the, the rocks were hitting him on the head. He had a big smile on his face and he saw Jesus sitting, sitting, standing up at the right hand of the Father. He wasn't screaming out in pain and saying, oh God, make it stop. And so therefore, again, I thought and I spoke to the Lord. I said, Lord, these are three of the most leading ministries on the island today and if that is happening to them how much of a chance do the people have and the Lord just said he said this is one of the major reasons that I have you here and I pulled you here from South Africa you and your wife because you're walking in something and you, it's not just a new doctrine, a new revelation, but you're walking in something that is a missing element that is needed before the awakening of the island come. Now I'm not saying that pridefully or arrogantly, because it's all Him. But they, different people bring different things. And as when I say me or us, it's us as a church, we have to get this, what I'm about to talk about this morning, we have to get this and we have to, we, we have to write it down, study it out, get our minds renewed because this is our mandate. This is what we get to bring to the table. This is what we get to, and, and the, this is, we're ambassadors on this. See, we, we have leaders who know what it's like to love Jesus. They love Jesus with all their heart. We have leaders that they are baptized in the Holy Spirit. They have studied and have good doctrine. A lot of Bible schools around. Good-hearted people. They, have, they know how to lead. They, they have so much that they brought to the table. But, but there's, there's a missing element. And today, I mean, I've been talking about it. It's every time our mouth is open, we, we talk about it in one way or the other. <coughs> but it's just, it's just so important to each and every one of you watching online and to those of you in the house today this is so important Jesus suffered pain so that we could live a pain free existence yeah. and, and, and he unlocked the good life he came to give us life and life more abundantly and, and when you are in the presence of Jesus there's joy now if there's tears there are tears of joy But if you're in the presence of Jesus, there's joy. There's not heaviness. There's not darkness. And, and the enemy has come in with religion. I'm telling you right now. And he's made it. He's trying to make it dark and dingy. You should hear. There's some. I won't even go to most prayer meetings. Because, I mean, I go to one prayer meeting while we're having a groaning prayer meeting. it says the Holy Spirit will groan with groanings. It's not even talking about us. It's talking about Him praying. And, it, it, and His prayer results in all things working together for our good. And that word, the groan, it means a sound. So what in Romans chapter 8, it says that the Holy Ghost Himself will release a sound over our circumstances that will produce, when He releases that sound, Everything falls in line and starts working together for our good. Yeah. It's not a bunch of sad faced, pickled, juice drinking, <laughs> religious people 
pulling faces and groaning on the floor. Amen. It's not that. That is not what Romans chapter 8 is talking about. People, again, it's not a sad, pathetic thing. So much of the prophetic is actually pathetic. Well, the Lord showed me Jesus is weeping in heaven. No, he's not. He wept in the garden. He's rejoicing in heaven. He's the most positive, full of faith. He <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Again, people get this wrong revelation and then they take it on to themselves. And again, they have to carry the jar of pickle juice with them. Well, praise the Lord. Today, the presence of God is in this house. Really. Take another swig of pickle juice. The presence is so strong. Really. Okay, I know. It's okay. I, I mean, there's some people getting mad right now. I understand. It's fine. Praise the Lord. They got mad at Jesus all the time. But it's stuff like that where people take on that kind of heavy stuff and get messed up. And God forbid there's joy in the house. And then it's like, oh, how disrespectful can you be? One of the most respectful things that you can do is walk and live in joy. Amen. And, and walk with I mean, him. Well, yes, amen. Give him a hand. Thank you, Lord Jesus. He's come to give us life and life more abundantly. Now, we've been sharing this scripture for the last few weeks. Hebrews chapter 10, 38 says this. It says, the just shall live and move and have their being in faith. Yeah. Say faith. faith. They shall live by faith. So therefore, by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God, by the new covenant, we're to live by the new covenant. If we don't live by the new covenant... And according to the new covenant, we can be in the new covenant, but we've got to live according to the new covenant by faith. In other words, when he says, in his presence is fullness of joy, well, that means faith joy. Well, do you feel like it? Well, the Bible does not say that the just shall live by their feelings. My flesh does not feel like rejoicing at it didn't feel like at 4 o'clock this morning when I woke up. i tell you right now. But when I wake up, I say, this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice. And be glad in it. And then, when my friend Robert Cook calls me at 5.20 in the morning, and he says, oh, I say, Praise the Lord, Robert. This is the day the Lord has made. Rejoice and be glad in it. Every Sunday morning, don't I tell you that? Every Sunday morning. Thank you, Pastor. <laughs> the just will live by faith. Faith, peace. When everything wants to freak out on the inside, you say, no, by faith I lay hold of peace. Hallelujah. By faith. Well, how do you feel? I don't go by my feelings. How's your back feel? I don't want to know how it feels. I'm healed in the name of Jesus. Yes. By the faith, health in the name of Jesus. Yes. Well, that's just denial. Yes, it is. I'm denying the devil access. Yes. Faith words. Well, I just want to talk about my problem. No. Speak faith. The just will live by faith. I just want to sit here and just think about how sad things are in the world. No! <laughs> faith thoughts. Can I just listen to that country song one more time? Somebody done somebody wrong song? No! Turn it off. Listen to something that feeds your faith. 
The just will live by faith. In other words, you, you restrict yourself to a life of faith. I said this again. You restrict yourself to a life of faith. There's some people sitting in the church today, if they didn't restrict themselves to a life of faith, they'd be a gravestone over their head right now. You restrict yourself. The just will live by faith. You restrict yourself. If you're out there, the Holy Ghost is telling you to restrict yourself to a life of faith. Faith can only come by the Word of God. We're not just talking about reading the book of Exodus. We're talking about the New Covenant Word of God. In the light of what Jesus did. Living by that. And sometimes, I mean, your circumstances and my circumstances are so far away from what the way the Word says. But I have to stretch. And I have to, that's why they need, we need grace. It's not grace so that we can sin. It's grace so that we can live by faith. Yes, and so I just, every day, Father, I thank you. I receive grace. I receive that favor towards the Father. And, and by, by grace, I will now do it in faith. Hallelujah. And I will... It's not just about me, but you see, it's got to happen to me before it can happen through me. You cannot export what you haven't imported. You cannot give away what you don't have. You can preach a good message, but you can preach about joy all the time, but if you're a sad sack, nobody's going to get joy. People are going to get what you've got. And that's why, I mean, it's wonderful to preach the right thing. But the thing is, people get what you've got, not what you say. The Holy Ghost moves through people. Amen? Amen. He gets it to you, then He gets it through you. That's how He operates. And that's why there's so many, there's big churches that, that people get up and, and, they, and the person is just perfect in their presentation and preach the truth. But their whole life personally is a failure. And then you look at the people's lives in the church and, and they get exactly what the, the, that person's got. And the people around you. So we need to break through, not just for us, but we need to break through for, for the people we come in contact with. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Everything. Say everything. Everything. everything according to the new covenant. Everything we do according to the new covenant. In other words, no self-reliance. Only God relies. Nothing according to our understanding. But everything according to the word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Where everything we do, there's peace, there's joy, and there's rest. He, when the Lord leads you, the Bible says that He leads us forth with joy and peace. Anything that you are led to do by God, you're going to have joy and peace. And so if you're suffering burnout, and you have a nervous breakdown... Trying to do what you think God has told you to do. Number one, either He's not leading you. Or number two, you're not walking according to the new covenant. You're not, walking, you're not living by faith. Maybe you think, I tell you what, I would probably have a nervous breakdown if I looked at what God told me to do and I tried to do it in the natural. I think by day three I'd have a nervous breakdown. Because God always calls you to stuff that's much bigger than you are. And if you do anything for God, there's persecution, there's mean letters that come to you, there's stuff that you have no idea. You have to know who you are in God. You have to know who you are in Christ. And you have to walk in it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Romans chapter 14, 23 says this. <clears throat> Whatever is not of faith is sin. 
So in other words, if we're doing something that's not according to the Word of God, whether it's eating or drinking or conducting ministry, whatever we do, we have to do by faith. If, we don't, if, if it's not by faith, it's sin. In other words, it's missing the mark. And if we do things, so therefore we go, we proceed. Well, I just, I just, don't, I don't really have a lot of faith, but I'm just going to obey God. No, no, no. Don't obey God over having faith. Get the faith. Get the Word of God. Get the revelation. Wait. Don't just step out. Wait, 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 wait. Get the revelation. Get the joy. Get the peace. And then step out. So that when you step out, you step out in joy and peace. Because otherwise, I mean, there are people that are doing things for the sake of the Lord, but they're not doing them by faith, and God calls it sin. Well, I just led 500 people to the Lord. Well, you just sinned. Well, I just led 500 people to it. Yeah, but you did it in your own strength. You did it under pressure. You did it. You came up with a scheme in your own mind. And you stepped out. God didn't even tell you to do it. And you did it just because you felt, you know, well, it's the religious thing to do. And, well, I set all these goals, this New Year's resolution... Yeah, those goals are going to make you have a nervous breakdown if you just if you set the goals. But if it's, if the Lord speaks to you, I want you to do this and so, and then you say, Lord, I thank you, I receive the grace to do it in Jesus' name. And as you meditate, I receive the plan to do it. I receive it's I can do all things through Christ, but I need I have to do them by faith. I have to do them. I have to have that inner revelation, that inner knowledge. I need to hear God and step out in faith. Because if I step out in myself, my physical body will not be able to handle the things that come against it. When Peter, before he walked down the water, he saw Jesus walking on the water. He didn't just step out of the boat. He said, Lord... Bid me to come. I want to walk on the water too. But I need your word. Before I do what I do. And Jesus said. Come. He said, well that's all I need. Step out of the boat. Walk to the water. He had the sense to wait on Jesus. To speak the word. And faith comes by hearing the word. And so Peter did not just try. To walk on water. He stepped out in faith. And, and he walked on the water by faith. Now, if the rest of the disciples, people criticize them for staying in the boat. Well, they stayed in the boat. Peter's the only one that walked. They were smart. If that's what Peter's walking on the water, let's, let's walk on the water. They would have had a nervous breakdown in the ocean. Blah, 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 blah. See, this is what happens, is we read about books of what people have done for God. And we say, well, look at them. They've done this mighty work and done that mighty work. Would you please share all the principles of how you did that? Yeah, well, the seven steps to what I did is thus and so. You can do it too if you follow these seven steps. Oh, okay. I will follow the same I'll, I'll use the same pattern. And I'll do what so and so has done. I'll walk on their revelation. And so they step out on somebody else's revelation. On somebody else's plan. And, and they, they go through the mechanism of it. And outwardly everything seems to work. If it worked for so and so it has to work for me. Yeah. It does work outwardly, but the problem is, outwardly everything works, but that person didn't hear from God. They were following a book and a recipe. 
And in God, you don't follow a book and a recipe. You follow the Lord for yourself. Each person has to work out their own salvation. We have to hear God. You can't do something on my revelation. If you do, you're going to fall on your face. Too many people out there doing stuff on somebody else's revelation. Be careful. If you read a book, read it as somebody's testimony. But don't just go do what they've done without first hearing from the Lord. Hallelujah. Told you it was going to be a bit serious today, but it's important. This is what's going on. People go, well, we're going to go to church growth seminar. And, and there's going to be some powerful principles important. I'm going to go home and do what they did. Yeah, and then you're going to have a breakdown afterwards. And maybe die prematurely. Well, they didn't die prematurely, no, but they heard from God. Until they wrote the book on how to do it. Notice Moses never wrote a book on how to part the Red Sea. If he did, we'd be out there trying to do it. We'd all have sticks and try to... He never wrote a book on how to get water out of the rock. Jesus didn't write a book on how to multiply the loaves and fishes. Or how to get money out of the fish's mouth. Wouldn't that be nice? The seven steps to get money out of fish's mouth. So, I mean, here's the thing. It, it's like people just, something happens, they write a book. Well, I'm going to write a book. If you just do what I say and do what I did, then the same thing will happen to you. No, maybe outwardly, but the just live by faith. And faith comes from hearing the Lord and from the Word of God for yourself. It is a, there's a mandate, our walk mandates a personal relationship with Jesus. There were some people out there that tried to cast out devils in the book of Acts. And they spoke to the devils and they said, devils... Come out of that person and, 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 we, and we tell you in the name of Jesus and, and Paul who Jesus preached about. And they said, well, we know Jesus and we, and we know Paul, but who are you? And beat them up. And the Bible says they beat them up and, and they ran away bloody and naked. First streakers. <laughs> Beaten up. And there's a bunch of people running around bloody and naked. I mean, we're, we're joking, but it's, it's, it's a serious thing. They're running around bl bloody and naked. And they stepped out, but it's because they read a book. It's they, they didn't do it by faith. They didn't do it according to the new covenant. I would rather not pray at all until I find out what the Bible says about prayer. And pray according to the new covenant. Just slow down. Get to know Jesus. Get to know the new covenant. The people are praying all kinds of weird things. And weird ways. Not according to the new covenant. Do you know that all prophecy is for edification? That's right. Mm -hmm. Well, the Lord showed me that... Uh, uh, such and such is, is upset because they went and did this and did that and they committed this kind of sin and did that kind of sin and that's why they had such a problem. No, the Lord didn't show you. You're making it up. Who's that edifying? you sharing that story. If the Lord shares something with you, it's going to be edification, it's going to right. bring deliverance right. and it's not going to be some dirty gossip story that gets spread around. Yeah. Yeah. People say things, speak things over other people in the name of religion. They don't live by faith. They're not doing it by the new covenant. Especially in the charismatic arena. I mean, it's it's a crazy place out there. There's every wind of doctrine floating around. Some people are so busy having visions 
and dreams and falling into trances and whatever and they're not in the Word. And then they get this vision of Jesus saying certain things and they give that a higher level priority than the Word. And meantime it's a familiar spirit. But they don't know how to discern it. They're not living by faith. They're not living by the new covenant. Well, so and so had a dream and they saw Jesus and they said this and so. It's not lining up with the new covenant. Why would Jesus say that or do that and violate what he just said? I'm always checking things through God's mirror. The word of God is, is reflecting that, is it in line with that. Always, always. If we don't do that and we go into ministry and we do it not according to the new covenant and we entertain things I mean there's people that well I'm going to counsel you today be very careful before you counsel somebody because the Holy Spirit is the counselor not you okay. well I'm going to counsel you so tell me all your problems I have a revelation when you were three your mom did not change your diaper and that's still affecting you today. Give me a break. All of you, I mean, we're laughing, all this stuff's happening. It's, ha it's out there, and you know, one of the counselors is messed up. Because that counselor is sitting listening to stories. As, why, well, you know, tell me more what, what happened. And people are describing all kinds of things. To the counselor. The Holy Ghost can take it, but even He doesn't want to hear about all the problems. His counsel to us is how to live and how to walk right. and, 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 right. and showing us the way to walk. That's right. He doesn't care about, we go to God, well, Lord, let me just tell you about all my problems. It's like, well, I already know about that. Let me tell you what the answer is. People come to me, well, I want to come to you for counsel, for marriage counseling. Well, let's both sit down, the husband and wife, and we're going to have a fight in front of you. And we're going to, I'm going to tell on him, and he's going to tell on her. Not in my office. No way. I don't want to know. I mean, it's like I might hear some things that I can't unhear. I might see them, some things that I can't unsee. I don't want to know about that. Come and sit down. Well, we need help in a marriage, okay? Here's what the Word says about a godly marriage. Yeah, amen. Here's what, and, and, and here's what the Word says. And here, here's what the Word says, how to, how to deal with differences. And here's how the Word says, how to live in harmony and peace. And, and, and just give them the Word. Wow. You walk out and you go, man, it felt like... It felt like you just were in our house and you knew all our problems. No, I wasn't in your house and no, I didn't know all your problems. The Word of God is one size fits all. So people go, well, I'm a counselor. And as pastors, they sit down and, and well, because it's a pastor, people think they can tell you. I'm in there so many times as a, as a pastor where... I've had people call me and immediately they think I'm a confessional group. <laughs> and I mean, it's like, so my wife is a pastor along with me, but there's some ladies that don't want to talk to her. No, I don't want to talk to a lady because she'll have my number. I won't be able to pull one over on her. She'll know immediately and she won't put up with it. I want to talk to the pastor. Pastor Nick. And then they immediately, they want to tell me, I mean, all kinds of stuff. And I, I'm telling you right now, how many times, 90% of times, the thing goes sexual? Because that's what they think they can do in a confessional booth. And there's pastors listening to all that kind of stuff. I'm like, lady, 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 whoa, hold on. I have somebody you need to talk to. <laughs> Well, I don't want to talk to the pastor's wife. I want to talk to the pastor. No, she is a pastor. But she's not going to listen to the story either. 
She doesn't want to know either. But she will speak life into your situation. But people open themselves up to all this stuff. I'm telling you, in ministry. When there's fights and things, they try to be the problem solvers. And God hasn't called us to solve problems. He solved every problem. We point to Jesus. Less of us, more of Him. Anything to do with the Lord, His burden is light. His yoke is easy. If it's not easy and if it's not light, we're doing it not, we're not doing it according to the new covenant. So you sit down and you're, you're sitting down in a conversation with people and it goes south. And you, know, you pipe up and say, well, is this easy and is this light? Is this room filled with joy? No. We're all frowning. We're getting angrier by the second. We're getting more frustrated by the second. Well, let's stop what we're doing right now. And let's go to the Lord. And, and let's invoke His presence into this place. Lord, we need You. We need Your grace. And we know that You're the answer. And you go towards the Lord and you seek Him. See, there's a way of doing things that's right and there's a way of doing things that's wrong and and we have to learn how to live and move and have our being in him and shut certain things out and there's certain discussions we don't have i tell you one of the one of my favorite scriptures my favorite scripture probably of all times and those in the church are really smiling they know where i'm going to go next Philippians <laughs> chapter 4 verse 8 because <laughs> that is such a new covenant scripture hallelujah I've had more people angry over Philippians chapter 4 verse 8 well get real you can't but let's just read this because this is the word of God and this is what faith comes out of finally believers so it's for believers non-believers can't do this but finally, believers, whatever is true, and then I put a little asterisk, and this is what I added in. This is not in, if you read in your Amplified, you won't find that there. This is what I've amplified it even more. Whatever is true, or according to the new covenant, then back to what the Amplified Bible says, whatever is honorable, And worthy of respect. Whatever is right. And confirmed by God's word. If it's not confirmed by God's word. It's not included in Philippians 4. Whatever is pure and wholesome. Whatever is lovely and brings peace. Whatever is admirable and of good repute. If there's any excellence. If there's anything worthy of praise. Think continually on these things. Center your mind on them and implant them in your heart. Hallelujah. So Philippians 4.8 is a new covenant speedometer. If it's not in Philippians 4.8, we shouldn't... If, if we're doing something in a different way that's portrayed in Philippians 4.8, we're not doing it according to the new covenant. If we're saying anything that's not in Philippians 4.8... We're not speaking according to the new covenant. If we're thinking anything that's not in Philippians 4.8, our thoughts, we need to take our thoughts captive to the obedience of Christ. So well, what if you have to cast out a devil? Then you really need Philippians 4.8. When I cast out a devil, it's not, I don't, there's some places where they're like, where people are manifesting and screaming and vomiting on the carpet and making terrible noises and then the person, the exorcist, <laughs> says, what is your name? He's asking the father of all lies, what is your name? I'm Legion. He growls it out in the deep, I'm Legion. Yeah, you're a legend in your own mind, never mind. Meantime, it's a three-foot stick demon. Blind in both eyes, deaf in both ears with a speech impediment. I'm Legion. It's like, no. I, I just, when, when there's a devil, we, we talk to people 
In South Africa, we had a revival in the Indian community. They were all ex-Hindus. And they were all into that stuff. They would have hours of deliverance sessions. And have to keep bringing the hose pipe to wash out all the, I mean, gross stuff. And they thought, well, this is how, and hours and hours, and then finally, in the name of Jesus, I don't know, out of sheer exhaustion, the devil was so tired he had to leave. <laughs> I came in, I said, no. You don't see Jesus doing that. You see Jesus showing up on the scene, the devil saying, can we leave into the pigs? If he didn't give them permission to go to the pigs, they couldn't even go there. They just have to go. Just with them showing up on the scene. Yeah. And spent hours and hours, all this stuff. Uh, devil manifests. I'm like, shut up and leave and don't throw up in my carpet. <laughs> and they're out. We've trained them. We have a whole church there that people come and worship. And they bring all their Hindu friends. And in the middle of worship, somebody saw it. You know, doing the demonic dance, and somebody just comes next to them, puts their arm around them, whispers something in their ear, and you see the person bloop, drop to the floor. And they lay there on the floor. And if you can see in the spirit, you see the devil leave. And then later on, they shake their head, get up, start smiling. And then later, with the altar call, come give their life to Jesus. No disruption of service. So whenever you do something according to the new covenant, it's less of you and more of him. Yeah. You learn how to pray very short prayers. You don't have to, oh Jesus, we implore you, please. <laughs> and Jesus is standing there like, oh, can you please get over yourself? <laughs> It's just like, thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, I receive my healing right now. Well, I just lose your touch right now. Go down the prayer line. I used to feel like you had to pull the face to get the anointing up. Somebody comes, if they're really sick, you have to really, you know. I know that's on. Sorry, I scared you. But <laughs> <laughs> but it's just like Noble Hayes actually taught me he said I don't pray for people I just impart the anointing I'm like that's awesome can I do that <laughs> just impart the anointing in fact many times I mean Jesus says you lay hands on the sick and they'll recover didn't even say anything about praying so it just means there's an impartation so when Noble Hayes comes he says, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Parts that only people get healed. Devils come out. I said, wow, that's awesome. You see, it, when you do things the new covenant way, it's less of you and more of him. It's easier. It's lighter. It doesn't bring, it, it doesn't bring heaviness into your heart. It's full of laughter. It's full of joy. It's full of peace. It, it just and and the heavier stuff comes against you, the the more excited that you get. Praise the Lord! This is going to be a big victory. Amen. There's a big devil going to fall very hard in front of everybody, and Jesus is going to get the glory. Let's have a party! Hallelujah! He doesn't know he's under my feet. And that's why I, I, the Bible talks about at, at trials and tribulations, you shall laugh. Something comes against you, you start laughing because you live by faith. You know it's a defeated foe. Well, you have to fast and pray for 40 days before that happens. No. Jesus already fasted and prayed for 40 days. Now, the Lord might call me to do it, but it's not going to be to get God to do something. It's, it's, and really a lot of people, it's like, well, every year the whole church has to go through 40 days of fasting and praying. There was a ministry in South Africa, one of the greatest men of God, tremendous revival. And, but he got, the more he got into it, I mean, God was just doing it by faith. 
But the more that he got into it, people were asking him, why is this happening? How are you doing? He started thinking about it. And he was like, well, because I fast and pray, because I do this, because I do that. And then pretty soon he was fasting and praying 40 days every year. And all of his staff had to come fast and pray with him 40 days every year. And the more holy that he got, the less makeup his wife was allowed to have. But the secretary didn't get the message. And pretty soon the secretary looked prettier than his wife. And pretty soon the holy man that fasts and prays and speaks in tongues and everything hooked up with the secretary. And this happened. He was filling a tent with 30,000 people at the time, right off of his tent, bought it. Went off the rails completely. And, I mean, eventually, with, I had several affairs and with his mistress, drove off and died prematurely. And again, it's, I pray that, that through God's mercy that he's in heaven today. What a man of God. I still get chills when I think of the ministry. And today his children are out proclaiming the word of God and honoring their dad and praise the Lord for that. But again, folks, this is not about judgment. This is just, I'm just saying, when we take things on and we begin to operate in a different way than by faith and according to the new covenant, there's train wrecks all along the way. And this preacher here will be another train wreck if I ever get off that road. I don't have... How some of these people waited so many years before they went off the rails. I'd go off the rails in two days. I just, it's just like totally... But the thing is to walk in joy and to walk in peace and have a good marriage and everything. It's not because you've read seven books and because you're doing... It's, it's by grace. Through faith. With total dependence on Him. Living by faith. And I'm telling you right now, my wife and I are happy people. We, we're not fake. We're happy people. We, have, we joke about things. I mean, we just, in, <laughs> we joke about stuff, and all the time, I mean, this morning, she had a bird, a big mouth bird that she had to shut up, and the bird, the cockatoo, was like, <coughs> screaming and carrying on, and she called me, and how, what do I do with this bird, and we were talking about a plan, and <laughs> she said the bird's name, she said, such and such ain't worth the whiskey. <laughs> and the country saw me there worth the whiskey. We heard that one day on the, somewhere and laughed about it. It's such a funny thing. I don't recommend you listen to it. But, <laughs> but it's like, we're not religious. You get around us, we talk about stuff, laugh about stuff, have a good real. But we're living by faith. And it's not about how religious we are. We've been married 35 years. And deal with hardship every day. And I'm telling you, it's easier to pastor a big church than a small church. We've pastored both. Big, huge church, good staff and everything else. And it's so much easier. Get a small church. I mean, there's, there's a lot more happening and you know about it. Everything. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Are you receiving this? Yeah. And so our message and our mandate is to talk about living by faith. To talk about doing things according to the Word and according to the New Covenant where His yoke is easy and His burden is light. To, 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 to begin to study and how do you pray according to the New Covenant? And you discover some of the shortest prayers are the most powerful ones. What do you do when all hell breaks loose? Sometimes you pray a one word prayer. Jesus! And you just discover that less is more. And, 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 you, and it's not dependent on you doing everything right. It's dependent on the fact that He did everything right. And you have faith in Him and what He's done. 
And when, if, when we get things in perspective like that, in other words, we don't curse as the man who trusts in man, but blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. We don't look to people. So therefore, if somebody says, well, if you don't do this, I'm going to leave your church. Then you just go, well, I'm going to miss you. <laughs> now, I'm going to miss you. I listen to some country music you hear. For, for preaching material. <laughs> and we had a pastor friend who had a choir and people would start walking out the back door and the choir, he trained the choir to, to, to sing a song to them as they walked out. <laughs> I don't know if I should even say it, but my wife's like, no, don't say it. Okay. Right, so, um, <laughs> I will obey you. No, no, I've, been, I've seen, you know, that's right. And, like, hey, don't, and anyway, very, very free guy and shouts at them as they walk out the back door. It's like, in other words, it's fine. You don't have to love me. You don't have to love what I'm saying because He loves me. And, and what can man do to me? When people get upset. I'm going to take my tithe and leave the church. And you're not. I had somebody tell me. I, pay, I know how much I pay. I'm going to take my tithe and leave the church. And I said, well, you know. And I, I didn't say, we're going to miss you. <laughs> and I did, I really from my heart and I still miss them today they're awesome people, I miss them and it's wonderful but if they think they're my source of supply they've got another thing coming they came with a whole list of things they want to be changed in the church we've, got, we've been given more money and we feel we have a right to mention this now and that and that and that and that and I'm just like yeah, I don't get to do that with the Lord either <laughs> and um there's a lot of churches I can recommend that'll take your list. And just out they go with their dollars. And the Lord, the Lord's not going, oh my God, what am I going to do now? How am I going to pay the church bills? They just left with their tithes. When you walk according to the new covenant, you don't have to dance and put up and be subject to people that are manipulating. You can do what the Lord says and be free. Yeah. And I'll tell you right now, when you do what the Lord says and be free, it's wonderful. Amen. It's wonderful. And yes, the devil's going to get angry and pull faces and whatever. And, and you just look like, it, you, you, like you're watching a comedy. It's actually funny. Because he can't stop what God's going to do. And if he can't break you on the inside, he, that's all he can do through his threats. If he can't do that, there's nothing he can do. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. My beautiful wife. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Get away from me. I need to stand and wrap this thing up. <laughs> <laughs> be conducting the meeting from the floor. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Thank you for joining us. And I know you have to pray about it whether you can join us again after all the things, but if you just if you meditate on this, I mean it'll set you free. You don't have to be bondage to anybody. Who the Son sets free is free indeed. And He brings perfect liberty and blessing. And so therefore we bless you right now in Jesus' name. And all you're doing, all you're saying, live by the new covenant and unlock the good life in Jesus' name. God bless you.